So, uh, first, thank you uh, for uh, the organizer for uh, the kind invitation to participate in this meeting. It's really a pleasure to be here and to share this time. And, uh, well, what I'm going to show you today is something uh, different. Uh, maybe I think it's important to keep in mind that the uh, neuromodulation is not to treat at least at all uh, the presbyopia. Yeah, it's just a good compliment. You will see. Uh, very well, this is my disclosure. I have no financial interest in any other drugs. And uh, well, first, I think it's it's important to keep in mind some, some critical factors just to understand uh, around presbyopialic surgery. Uh, first. I think it is not for everybody, it is a whole refractive surgery. It, it's a summary of results. And of course, the expectation in terminating our patient is critical because the higher the expectation, the greater percentage of dissatisfaction. Sure that we have patients with uh, almost 20 20, and uh, they claim about the, the results. And uh, of course, it's essential to analyze. Uh, the causes of the uh, patient's uh, dissatisfaction. So visual optics is a, a correlation, a relationship between two of these main factors, uh, the optical factors and the visual perception. Uh, there is a correlation and uh, we will see how uh, work this uh, combination, this correlation. First, let, let me talk a little bit about the, the optical problems. Uh, residual anatropia. Of course, it's uh, well known for everybody that uh, when we uh, implant multifocal lenses, especially toric multifocal lenses, uh, the residual ametropia is really a problem. Because if we have uh, this kind of lenses, we will see that uh, uh, split the lenses, the geometry of the multifocal lenses, and create an overlap over the retina when uh, the different focus are projected. So if we have ametropia, uh, it's another issue over that corner, and of course, the final result is an impaired vision. So the next uh, uh, factor will be the eye of concentration, as we can see here, uh, TLD, that uh, in some cases is terrible, like in these cases with the crystal lens, of course, this is not the most, uh, is it not the most popular lenses in this moment. Also, it is photopsias. Uh, the optical aberration, especially now that we are talking about the chromatic aberrations, and uh, the ocular surface. And that display that we have to select the IOL specifically for each patient. We will see also what does it mean. And, and let me talk a little bit uh, about the, the ocular surface syndrome because uh, there are several public, uh, publications that uh, explain the problem with those patients who have. Uh, not exactly dry eyes, but an unstable tear film. We know that people that ask about refractive surgery, not only phycorefractive, even for less young people, almost 70%, this is a huge person that have any problem uh, at the uh, tear film stability. So that explains why, in some cases, we know, and it's been published too, that one of the key factors uh, explaining the dissatisfied uh, patients after uh, refractive surgery uh, is at uh, the origin is this instability in the children's field. Also, it's critical when we uh, uh, do the preoperatory uh, the, the measurements of patients, and uh, Dr. Duke Black published uh, in this, uh, this case that you can see that at the beginning, when the uh, patient arrived to uh, her office, uh, the refraction was like that one in your left, and after treatment, uh, because uh, that, that, uh, this patient has a dry eyes, uh, you can see that the axis also, the, um, the, uh, uh, the power of the statement has changed uh, dramatically. So uh, it's really important to, to keep in mind about dry eyes, uh, maybe it's in fashion. But it, it's true that many of the patients that we have uh, have some uh, problems in, uh, uh, especially the instability of the tumor field. So finally, what means the, the multifocal lenses? Well, we induce halos and scattering. Why? Because most of the uh, lenses that we use in this moment uh, use geometries uh, like diffractive or refractive that generate rings in the optical zone. Uh, to split the, the line and then uh, create uh, different focus. 
uh, usually uh, two main focus. Uh, all these uh, rates have projected uh, over the retina has this overlap and then induce this sensation of the halos and also the scattering that impair a lot of vision. So, uh, in order to understand what happened with, with halos and the new design, let me extend a little bit about uh, the physics. Uh, in order to understand what happened with uh, uh, this uh, new design. I think it's important to keep in mind that uh, when we talk about especially the refractive designs that are the most popular, uh, the configuration that we use in general Fresnel prisms uh, is a balanced uh, uh, relationship uh, between the, uh, uh, the distance between the ring and the height of the prism. So if we uh, have a close rings, we increase the addition. But at the same time, we generate more halo sensation. And if we increase the height of the prisons, we increase the energy in H force. And this is interesting because at least we think that if we have more energy in a near or distant focus, in the people who use that focus will be better. But this is not correct because uh, the line is split and then the energy at least will be 50% of, of age focus. So we have an impact in contrast sensitivity. We lose a lot of energy if we increase the head. So to solve this problem, and well, this is uh, uh, in order to, to uh, focus on the problem, uh, let, let me go directly to the problem. So uh, the companies at the beginning uh, trying to solve this problem as plans, uh, the Abolizes lenses. Uh, the, these lenses work because the uh, prisms uh, near the central area are with a height lower than the peripheral area, so in order to reduce this halo sensation. Uh, but it still has only two main focus for distance and for near vision, but not for intermediate vision. And here in your left, you could see in the, the lab how the intermediate vision is not so good as uh, near and distant vision. So in this uh, generation, we we'll see uh, trifocal, the two trifocal lenses by uh, fine vision. Uh, why uh, fine vision do this thing? Because uh, they try to uh, solve the intermediate vision and then they uh, use a mathematical algorithm based on Fourier analysis and create a different uh, uh, rings that with this modification uh, provide three folds. It's interesting because we can see a better intermediate vision, but not so much because the energy has divided in not only two focus, in three focus. So we lose a lot of energy. These patients feel maybe much better for the intermediate vision, but if they have some problem uh, the retina or maybe in the future some maculopathy they will have many problems because the contrast sensitivity, the light energy is not correct. And then uh, I think it's not the best approach. This is uh, my opinion. So uh, the next step uh, was uh, this lenses, the tennis uh, symphony that was launched three years ago. And my colleague and friend, Fernando, has introduced the, the, the subject. Uh, it's interesting because uh, nothing is a miracle in science. And uh, the, uh, the, One minute. the company, well, the, 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 the company in this case uh, used an, an, another uh, project that was uh, introduced uh, a mixed uh, configuration, a refractive fire in the center, and uh, uh, for distance or emotion the lenses. Uh, uh, for near and intermediate vision. This is uh, an aberration uh, area that uh, creates an aspherical aberration that provides near and intermediate vision. And then it's possible to reduce the distance and the height of the rings and uh, uh, the, the uh, intermediate and the, the, uh, the rest of the optical zone. It's only with uh, the diffracting, the diffraction prisms. Uh, but it's like a monofocal lenses, so uh, it's possible to reduce. This is the same story with the neo info. They do the same, a refractive area, then it's possible to reduce the rings around uh, this central area. Uh, 
the interesting thing in this, uh, let's just see, the, the Abbey index, it's uh, almost uh, like the crystal, the natural crystal lens and uh, reduce the aberrations. Another story is the mini well that has going out uh, uh, with my friend uh, uh, Fernando. It's interesting because created almost a poor, uh, 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 they don't use uh, rings, and then the idea is create an aberration that uh, makes the possibility to uh, have a, a, a progressive uh, distant, intermediate, and near vision. But you can see the quality of the image is not so good. But for contrary, <laughs> let, me, let me just one minute. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, we have a better contrast in CD that compensates this, uh, uh, this environment. So I think it's, it's ideal for those patients who have dry eyes. And, uh, uh, but finally, uh, we don't have solved perfectly the problem about the signal that can be thrown from the eyes to the brain. And it's the brain who need to improve this situation. And then we can help uh, this situation using uh, the uh, stimulus like Gabor. And then uh, we can create different exercises. The problem is still now are very important. And then we have a new, uh, a new uh, program. That just let me uh, show you this one. After the treatment, in this case with uh, the new programs, you will see that I don't know if it's possible from here. Uh, well, it's just to show any of the patients. Uh, this is a I, I try to record it and, and uh, record any of the patients move the eyes when reading. And you will see that the pre-op and the post-op it's incredible different. And here is the summary that we have uh, an improvement in the uh, reading speed after uh, four seasons, ten minutes, and uh, of course we can see here the, the improvement. So it's the brain who need to help to improve a little bit the image coming through that is imperfect and must be reboiled up again to see uh, much better. Uh, thank you, and I'm sorry for, for the time. Thank you. Thank you very much.